Thanks for staying with us now. In the world of business, beginnings are never easy. However, Africa presents some unique challenges to new businesses due to the uniqueness of the continent's emerging market. Africa is the most diverse region in the world, a continent of about 54 countries with over 130 major ethnic groups, 3,000 languages, all the major religions of the world, and many more traditional belief systems. A recent report by World Population Prospects, the 2015 revision, key, um, re revision Keys, Finding, and Advanced Tables by the United Nations estimated that more than half of global population growth between now and 2050 is expected to occur in Africa. Specifically, of the additional 2.4 billion people projected to be added to the global population between 2015 and 2050, 1.3 billion will be added to, in Africa. Now, the entrepreneurial drive in Africa is significantly larger than the rest of the world, with new businesses springing up at an exponential rate. So how can we then support this growth to get this economy ready for the population surge that is in the eminent? <laughs> now, please let us share what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us as we show Africa one with the hashtag we show. Or you send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-803-84663. All right, so I'm going to bring in our guests like in a minute or two. But I just wanted to hear your initial thoughts about startups, you know, in Africa. I know that um, lately, I mean, with a lot of things have been happening with technology on our side. God has really helped a lot of startup companies, as small businesses, especially the tech-driven ones yeah. in Africa. You know, they're gaining a lot of international attention, getting access to funds and to finance, you know. But do you think in your, um, in your opinion, it's enough? Because we have a huge deficit in, Ni in Africa, you know, especially in Nigeria. We have a huge deficit of, um, uh, we're not seeing the economic progress like we ought to see it, you know, mm -hmm. with all the things that we have at our disposal. So do you think um, building more startups and getting them funded would probably help the situation? Yes, I think so. Now, with the emergence of startups, especially in Nigeria right now, um, I think looking at the positive side, we're looking at employment. Mm -hmm. You have more people who are going to get employed. But now, the only sad thing about it is it looks like the government is out to get startups, mm. especially, <laughs> those, especially those in the tech industry. I um, knew you were going to go there. <laughs> oh, Jennifer, you can't disappoint me. <laughs> I mean, I'm into tech and we are trying to grow. We're trying to move forward. We are trying to be like our international counterparts mm. and our government is not allowing us to be great. <laughs> aside, aside tech startups, there are other um, economic startups and financial startups and all of that. Like everyone is, people, people, we have bright minds in Nigeria and people are saying that, oh, I can do this. They probably seen a project that was being done uh, maybe in an international country or something like that. And then they want to probably do something like that that would help the Nigerian economy. Please. Absolutely. Let them be great. <laughs> let them be great. But talking about funding, though, mm. I think that's something a lot of people need to look into. And I'm very much interested in hearing um, yeah, from our guests. Yeah, okay, so let me just bring them in. We actually have two amazing guests with us. So I'll start with Aniko Sigetvari. She has over 22 years of experience investing in emerging markets, of which 18 have been focused on tech, the technology, media, and telecom uh, vertical. Now, Aniko is the co-founder of Atlantico Ventures, an Africa impact-focused venture capital fund. Prior to founding Atlantica Ventures, Aniko spent 20 years at the International Finance Corporation, most recently as global head of the TMT Group, leading the firm's effort for, um, from deal origination through portfolio management. And IK Kanu is an experienced investor with 10 years of direct African investment experience and nine additional years of experience working in technology and consulting in the United States. IK is the co-founder as well of this um, um, venture, that's the Atlantico Ventures, which is focused on um, impact in Africa. And he also serves on different advisory boards, you know, of um, African startups. Um, and they've joined us live from the United Kingdom. Thank you so much for joining us, Aniko and Ike. Hi. Good evening, everyone. 
pleasure to be here. All right. <laughs> Thank you for joining us this evening. So you heard a little banter on the conversation around the, um, um, what's it called, the challenges. Maybe we should start, first of all, with the challenges of, that you have experienced over the years with African startups. Because we know that um, you are focused so, um, especially on tech-driven businesses. But what's the major challenge that you have seen over the years working with startups in Africa? So let me come to IK then. Aniko will, cut, will jump in. So um, thanks for being here again. So the difference of uh, challenges you see are wide and various. So from funding to access to markets, access to um, knowledge, and the biggest problem across startups you see across Africa is just access. So they need capital. They need know-how. What you mentioned earlier in terms of pattern recognition to then see, I've seen a typical business like this somewhere in the US or the UK. I want to then take this learning, build a similar solution for problems that I see in Nigeria or in Kenya or in Ghana. How do I do that? How do I build a team around that? How do I actually grow as a business rather than just build a product? So those are the challenges that you see. And that's what we do as Atlantic Ventures to then help solve the access problem. We help solve them by giving them access to capital, access to our network to then help them scale their product and their business, and access to knowledge by bringing a full network of people that we know and help them build and grow their business. Awesome. Aniko, you want to jump in there? <laughs> yes. Um, on top of it, the entrepreneurs have the extra challenge of of coming from a lower infrastructure environment and not nearly as developed as in other markets. But while it, it can be looked at as a, a disabler or negative, it also does act as a catalyzer. So you'll, you'll see entrepreneurs in Africa and Nigeria, particularly very creative, um, bootstrapping their businesses uh, and successfully growing them without a whole lot of money going in and funding those startups and being able to scale them with fraction of the money their peers and counterparts would do in other parts of the world. So while it's a negative, I think it's also a positive. Okay, so Aniko, I need to stay on this there because I was just going to ask that because when um, IK was talking about access, you know, I always have this feeling and correct me if I'm wrong, I always have this feeling like Nigeria is very unique, right? When it comes to <laughs> how investors approach businesses in Nigeria, I believe that we're very unique. Um, is this true? Is there a different model that you look at when you are dealing with a business, a startup in Nigeria, compared to other African countries, especially with the unique challenges that we have? So maybe you, you start first, then Ike would come in. <laughs> Well, I would say it's the largest economy in sub-Saharan Africa. Um, it's a um, very large population, um, condensed population. So it has, um, because of that, it, it's challenges, but it's unique opportunities as well. Uh, the market is really large. So if you look at the African landscape, startup landscape, a, a large percentage of the startups are in Nigeria given these democrat, uh, demographics and macro forces that are uh, present in the country. So I would say from that point of view, you have initially a much larger market to start your startup in. So you can scale within a single market. If you know that market is your home market, you can do it, I think, faster and easier. Mm -hmm. And then it, it's potentially an easier jump to then go to other, mar other countries or other regions I think it's a harder uh, to scale a business um, and make it, um, you know, similar to a, a, a Western a unicorn status if you're coming from a smaller economy, because it means you'll have to go to many, many countries to achieve that. So from that point of view, Nigeria is really ideally set up is that the market is really large. I like that you're approaching this very positively. <laughs> I can let me yeah. come to you. <laughs> yeah, because so... Uh... So in terms of the differences, there are cultural differences when you go across borders. Mm -hmm. And there's also structural differences when you then look at a business in Kenya and South Africa versus a business in Nigeria and Ghana. Yeah. So you then have to actually cater your approach to then dealing with that investor, with that uh, startup in those different markets. So Nigerian investors are usually very, very, I'll say, very um, positive, very, I wouldn't say aggressive, but very, very driven. And a lot of the work we have to then do with Nigerian startups is to actually work with them and try to help them focus and 
put a lot of their energies in the right direction because it's a massive, massive opportunity. And the desire is just to go big out there. But we try to actually work with them to then say it's a good opportunity, massive market. Like Aniko said, let's take care of home base first before we start going far and wide. Whereas if you look at other markets that the structural challenges aren't as uh, dominant, there's actually more flexibility for them to try different things because there's a chance for them to actually start up something quickly, fail fast, and move on again. Absolutely. Hmm. Okay, so um, let's use me as, exam as an example. Say I'm a startup and I'm trying to get funds to start up a tech company. And right now, I don't have enough capital. How would you advise I go about that? Are they there? I think he's frozen. I think we've lo we're losing. <laughs> All right, so I think um, we're losing our guest. Because I was going to ask the question, maybe where they're trying to reconnect, you know. I like the fact that she's been positive about it. You know, she's looking at the opportunities, the fact that we have the numbers, we are a very large market and yeah. all of that. You know, the, 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 the direction I want to ask is, you know, the approach, because it's different if you are dealing with a country like um, um, Kenya, for instance, you know, where there's a, bit, a little bit of sanity and structure, or Ghana, for instance, you know, compared to Nigeria. To Nigeria you yeah. know, so I was wondering if, as an investor, when you're looking at the business model, there are certain things that you will look at. You look so out look out for. for so that when a young startup is coming to you as an investor, they might need to also factor in those, you know, those things that you are going to be looking out for. Mm -hmm. You know, but I don't know if they're trying to to reconnect our guests. Yeah, yeah. So we're having we're having uh, troubles with. You see, this is why we say. <laughs> physical physical presence is key. But have you had any reason to approach any investor? Um, for a business idea or a concept that you have? Um, yeah. But what was it, your experience? Okay, so it, it had to do with fashion. Mm. And that was during my NYC where I thought I was destined to be a fashion designer. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I, I met, um, I, was a, I was organizing um, a fashion show mm -hmm. with a group of people. And then I met this um, sweet girl. And when we both talked about how um, we talked about our dreams for our fashion brands, and then she was like, "Oh, maybe we should partner up." And I'm like, "Okay, sure." But now the problem is we don't have the funding to actually do that. And if we're looking at um, going big scale, we needed funding. Now you know where they tell you, "Oh, start small." Mm -hmm. Look at we weren't looking at that. Oh, we were like, mm -mm. "We don't want to start small. We actually want to start big. We need a factory. We need um, a very big space where we'd have our customers coming in for testing and quality control and all of that." Blah 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 blah. And then um, we couldn't. We we wanted to. Um, what's the name of this um, industry? bank of industry mm. yeah they were doing um they were doing a thing where they were going to in invest in people's um businesses and then they were asking for a lot of documents and we looked at each other like we don't have that right <laughs> <laughs> so you know what let's just focus on our immediate mm. families and friends mm. so i reached out to a friend of mine who said oh yes that his dad would love to invest then they started asking for different documents so business plan <laughs> all of and I mean, I was just fresh out of uni and I didn't understand the whole business plan process and how business actually works. Mm. So I had to do a lot of research, I had to ask a lot of people. And then somebody who had a very deep insight on everything just told me, you know what, I see, I would advise you not to go through this route mm. because they are going to ask you for a lot. We, um, before I got to my friend, there was somebody, there was a guy that we met who all he does basically is invest in fashion brands. Mm -hmm. But the terms he was giving us, to be honest, was quite ridiculous. He was asking, I can't remember the amount, but he was asking for a certain percentage monthly. Now, when you look at the fashion um, industry or fashion brands, you realize that um, you can't break even. 
in when you start because you have to think of marketing you have to think of sales you have to think of promotion you have to think of logistics so by the time you start in the first one month you have spent almost all your capital getting the business to run mm -hmm. now you have a space you have to think of um diesel and all of that it was, yeah it was a lot and when i he gave us a document to read and i gave it to my lawyer friend and she looked at it and she looked at me she said this guy is about to rip you off so basically what the document was saying was that we'll practically be working for this guy for two years mm. straight he will be taking major part of the profits and at the end of two years we won't have even broken even at mm. all would that so you in, probably check that's why because that's nothing. also why i would love to hear from kanu and um aniko because of this fear because mm. this is the biggest fear i mean see the topic the 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 example i gave when we started the show about that that um, pharmaceutical company yeah that had you know it, big issues with the investors it was almost like they were now time coming to take over their business yeah. and all of that so mm. i mean this is this is genuine fears and concerns you know but the truth is that we cannot do without investors. investors at some point in our businesses we cannot do without funding at some point in our businesses so what would be the best you know kinds of funds because there are also different kinds of funds to to take mm -hmm. you know you can't just wake up and say you just want to take any kind of money Anymore, yeah. there's the patient funds right you know there's the patient funds there's the fund that you know whether uh, um, there are grants you know so it's not all that is just tied to just um, 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 what's it called um, payback or mm -hmm. interest, interest and all of and that. All of so that, you need yeah. to also be careful who you're dealing with in terms of you know investors. All right, so I think we're going to take a break. Or do we have our guest now? Okay, so we're going to take a break. When we return from the uh, break, hopefully we'll be able to link up back with um, Ike and Aniko. Stay with us. We'll be right back.